Okay, for question 11, part 1. It's a partial question on five girls. Okay, so, so basically the order is we need to have Matthew first and Mary at the six in the queue. Matthew first, Mary six in the queue. So basically the remaining eight people get factor wheel divided by 10 factor wheel. Is this the answer? Is this the answer? So we can get one out, so of, we can. One out of 19. Because it becomes 8 factorial times 8, divided by 8 factorial times 9 times 10. So we get 1 out of 19. Tamika, okay? I think I might have done the wrong set of questions because I took the question from the tutorial. Is this a tutorial? Is this a tutorial? Um, I think... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got wrong. Uh, I, I show you the supplementary one instead of a tutorial. Okay, sorry, sorry. I apologize. So we go back to 11, 12. Sorry. Okay. I think it's tutorial question 11, 12. So tutorial 11, I'm assuming 26 letters. So three different letters and two different digits. Find the probability that a random chosen code. Three different letters. Okay, so three different letters. So this is the probability divided by the one without restriction. 0 0.789. Okay, can we look at part two? Yeah, Amika, what's your question? Amika, um, sorry, may I know if you can use um P and C to use the uh, to solve this? P and C then is twenty six letter choose three, then ten to choose two divided by twenty six to the power of three times ten to the power of two. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Sentence is okay. Our oh, sentence how was the test? I think it was okay. Except for like one question, which I don't know how to do. What is the topic for that question? It's like integration, but of parametric function. Oh, okay. Integration of parametric function. So it's like, I couldn't do the last part, which was finding some area between like the intersection of two graphs. Okay. The rest are okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Tobika, have you gotten back your paper? Not yet. Okay. Okay, okay. not okay. okay. Understood. So now we look at the second part. Um, so then the second digit higher than the first digit for part two. Um, it's an interesting question. So basically, I use this method. I use one minus the probability the same digit. And then divided by two. Because it could be the same digit could be the first one higher than the second one or the second one higher than the first one. So there are two such cases. Okay, so one minus a probability, one minus a probability of the same digit then divided by two. So this is my method. Okay, so far. So same digit means I choose any of the digit there after that I must be times one. Yeah, okay, now let's continue. For the part three, exactly two letters, the same and the two digits are the same, but not both. Okay, let me show you the working. So we have split into cases. So we can find the probability exactly two same letters and the two different digits. And all letters are different and the two digits are the same. And then three letters are the same and the two digits. And the two same digits. This is the working for part three. So we split into cases and we have to sum up the cases. Now we look at part four. Okay, so exactly one vowel and exactly one even digit. So for, for the last part, because it's end, right? <clears throat> this and that. I can do 21 choose one, the power of two, to choose the consonant. Then vowels. 5 choose 1. After that, let them permute it. Okay. Then after that, I do the even number. 4 even number choose 1. And the four odd, 5 odd number choose 1. After that, 2 factorial. So let me write down the... Uh, this part is the vowel. This part is the... Oh, sorry. This is the vowel. The first part is the consonant. And then permute it. Then here is the even number. Here is the odd number. Then permute it. 
Yeah, so it's we settle the letter followed by we settle the number. Can we now move on? So now we look at final answer, 0 0.186. Okay, so far, Amika and the Santosh, okay, yeah. Now we look at question 12. Our uh, question 12 is a bit um, special. So there are 25 people with a Li as a, as a name. 11 is Chen. Okay, so there are four single men, four single women, and uh, eight couples. So for the Chen, with the surname Chen, two men, two women, and the married couples, three. Okay, so basically we have to show, uh, randomly choose two people, and they both have the surname is Li, is 25 out of 36 times 24 out of 35. Okay, so we have shown the first part. Second part, find the probability they are married to each other. Okay, so they are married to each other. So we can do, because they're all together 11 couples, 11 couples choose one couple compared to randomly choose two per two people from the 36. Let me talk about part two. So we have 11 couples. From 11 couples, we choose one couple. Out of there are 36 people there, we choose two out of them. Okay, so far. Okay, so then we can get the answer. Okay, so, so for the next one, find the probability that they both have the name V given that they are married to each other. So we can actually choose eight, choose one for the couple. So 11 couple, out of them, eight of them are Lee couple. So the Lee couple out of 11 couples, yeah. So eight choose one, 11 choose one. So it's a probability both Lee and they are married divided by the probability that they are married couple. That's all. Okay, so far. Okay, now let's look at question four. Find the probability that they are a man and a woman with the same name. So it could be. So from Lee family or from the Chen family. So from the Lee family, we can have divided by randomly choose 36, choose two. Okay, so far. So far, class, can we move on? Last part. Find the probability that they are married to each other given that they are a man and a woman with the same name. So it's a probability they are married and uh, given that they have the same, same, same name. So the calculation is uh, the probability of their marriage and they have the same name divided by the probability they have the same name. So we can use the answer from the previous part. Final answer is 11 out of 186. Okay, so far. Question from Santosh. Okay, so let's try question 13, 14. Now we start by normal distribution. Okay, I handle the drawing board. So we have two more questions, 13 and 14. Then we can continue with binomial. Then type out your answer once you have done. Santosh, good job for the first part. Hamika, I think your part three not really correct. Part one, part two, you did well. How do you do part three? Question 13. What is the best method? You can actually try this method. Um, so basically is A in envelope B and the B uh, and the B is incorrect. Okay. So also can be A in envelope C, D, or E, and then B incorrect. This is a this is the working. I think part three is not so straightforward. Okay, so for the first case, A in envelope B is one out of five. Then B in the incorrect envelope is for sure because the, the envelope B has been taken by A. And then for probability of uh, um, A in envelope C, D, E intersect with B in the incorrect envelope, we do three over five times three over four because envelope in C, D, E is three out of five and B is incorrect is three out of four because there's still a B there, we cannot choose. So this three is the remaining 
envelope. Okay, but not not B. We get the final answer as 13 out of 20. Yeah, so after that, please try question 14. Okay, I have another drawing board already, so you can type out your answer. Is it very hard? I, I don't see a very good progress. Do you need help? For question 14, is there any part you want me to help? Santosh? Uh, I think I'll part A wrong. I, I got part one wrong, so. Okay, so let's do it together. So for the first part, uh, part A, part one, Basically, the first person can be any day of the week. Second person is uh, when n equals to c. Do so. I get five out of seven. So it's thirty out of thirty-nine. Uh, sorry, forty-nine. So when they say any day of the week, they mean Monday to Sunday. So that's seven days. So we want to find the probability that the n like n equals to three, right? So first one can be any day, second one is not the same day, third one is not the same day. Satosh, can you understand the working? Okay, thank you. Okay. After a short while, I'll turn out the drawing board. Hamika, do you manage to do a part two? A part two is some similar approach, like you let the next person be born on the same day. Okay, I'll hand out the drawing board. Okay, upload the working for B and C. I'm sorry, I'm not really sure how to do part B. So we look at the question. Assume now that a randomly chosen person is equally likely to have been born on any month of the year. Find the smallest value of n such that the probability that the person in the room were born on different months of the year is less than half. Okay, so how do we get started for this question? So how many months are there in a year? Mm -hmm. 12. 12. So, okay, what you can do is, if there's only, um, because they say more people to born on the, uh, on the same month, so when n equals to two, at least must have two percent now. First one is 12 out of 12. Second one is 11 out of 12. Okay. So you will get 0 0.917, which is greater than half. If we have n equals to 3, 2 more than half, then we will continue this process until it is less than half. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. So what is the final answer for the value of n? Find the smallest value of n such that, such that. the probability that the people in the room were all born on Different month, it's less than half. Uh, I got n equals to five. Yes, good job. Yes. Good. Okay, so you can try question. What about the what about the part C? What is the answer? Santosh, what's your answer for question 14, part B and part C? You can type it out. Santosh, good job for part B. Are you are both of you still doing part C now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you another um two minutes to try. Then I'll go to you. Do you find the answer? Do you find the answer, class? You're actually using okay. one graphing calculator to do. Yeah, okay, go to with you. I mean, um, if you do manually like the previous question, it's a bit more time consuming. So we can do this. Basically, we do first one is three three six five divided by three six five. The second one is three six four times three six five, all the way to the uh, this is the first person. This is the last person. Okay. Then we can key this to graphing calculator. So when n equals to 22, it is greater than half. When n equals, and when n equals to 23, it is less than half. So the smallest value is 23. Understand? So you don't do manually. You try to use calculator. It will be faster. So I'll make it the last question in power break. Uh, after the, uh, give you a short break after this, and then we'll start binomial. We just only do, Poisson is no longer in the syllabus. I'm just do binomial distribution. Okay, okay. Any question you want to further clarify for a probability part? Or oh, not really, not really. Santosh, everything okay so far? Okay. So we take a short break. After that, we continue with binomial distribution. Let's resume lesson now.
So we'll be talking about um, normal distribution, sorry, binomial distribution. Okay, and after that is normal, then we are having, after normal is hypothesis testing and the linear regression. So we are actually towards the end of the syllabus already to be able to finish before June holiday. Yeah, around March, uh, I'm sorry, around May, we should be more or less finished with the uh, syllabus. Okay, so we look at the first part on a brief introduction to discrete random variable. So in this chapter, we will study variables that can be associated with statistical experiments and investigate some characteristics of their behavior. Okay, so for example, if we roll a ordinary die, okay, so the score would be one all the way to six. They are all countable, okay? They are all countable, different number. So in contrast, the random variable weight of a living human, it is continuous, okay? It could be, for example, 0 0.6 kg, okay? Eh, 635 kg, that sounds horrible. I think it's maybe, I don't know what is the most heaviest person in the world, maybe 200 kg, around that. 0 0.6 kg, I think is a um, pre, premature born infant. Yeah, so it could be 0 0.65 kg, it could be 20 kg, could be 60.5 kg. Yeah, could be any other value. So for a more example of discrete random variable include number of heads obtained in tossing a coin 10 times, number of girls in a family of four children, number of red balls out of three drawn from a bag of two red balls and three green balls. So basically, discrete means the number has to be an integer, positive integer. Okay. It has to be a positive integer. Okay, so far, everyone? Yeah, thank you. So now we look at the next part of the concept. Hi, Santosh, are you back to class? Hi, Santosh, yeah, okay, yeah. Turn on the camera, please. So the probability of a, rand of a random variable shows all different values that the random variable can assume and their corresponding probability. So the probability distribution can be in the form of a table. So we can have head, 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 tail, and the other combination. If we consider a fair coin cost three times. Okay, so we have different combination. So we look at here, X. Okay, x represents the value, which is the number of hits obtained. It could be zero, could be one, could be two, could be three, could be any of the values here. So if x equals to zero, that means, okay, every time is tail. So tail occurs for three times. If x equals to one, then it's one head, two tail. Okay, so we can have uh, one combination with that we times three. Because the it could be H T T could be H a T H T could be T T H could be the three values. Okay, so far. Yeah. So the next part is on if you have two head. So two head is head head tail, and the head tail head, and the Tail head head. Okay. Could be any of the three. Uh, any, any one of all of the three. So for x equals to three, it's half to the power of half to the power of three, which is one over eight. Okay, so if let's say we want to find x is greater than or equals to two, we have to consider t equals to two, t equals to three, then find the sum. It is also possible that x is between 0 0.8 and 3.2 inclusive. So x can be one or two or three. So we just use one to minus the probability that x equals to zero. We get seven over eight. Yeah, so now we'll talk about uh, something called expectation. Expectation is something like a mean 
we find the average. Okay, we find the average. So what is mean about? We will be looking at uh, the zero times the probability. The number is the um, value times the probability. So we use this notation. All value of x. Sum of all value of x from x. Of x times probability of x. We use the number of hits obtained in three tosses of the fair coin. We can have zero times one eighth, one times three eighth, two times three eighth, and three times one eighth. We add them up. Uh, then we can find the expectation. So the expectation is 1.5. So it's something like we predict or say the average of number of hits obtained in the three tosses is 1.5. So we expect to see that. So we can use GC King the value and then we use one variable statistics to calculate the average the, the, this x bar, the x bar, okay, and the summation. The expectation in the summation. Yeah. So now we can look at okay, variance. Variance, I think in secondary school you also cover a bit. Okay, so variance of the data is the average of the squared difference between each value and the mean. Okay, so we'll have the variance of x equals to expectation of x minus mu and then squared. Then we can simplify from that. Yeah. So now we look at for Variance, okay, yeah, it is expectation of x squared minus mu squared. Mm -hmm. So for standard deviation, okay, it is a square root of variance. Square root of variance is a standard deviation. Okay, now we look at variance part. We need to use the value minus away the mu and then square. Okay, so that's the probability. Okay, then after that, we times this. You can see it's a product of x minus mu squared. Okay, then we find it as 0 0.75. Okay, so far. Okay, so let's look at binomial distribution. So we talk about the tree diagram when we cover the probability topic. So if we toss, we consider toss a biased coin where the probability of obtaining a hit in any toss of the coin is one third. Okay, and then uh, getting a head is what one third. So getting a tail, probability of having a head is one third. Probability of getting a tail equals to two over three. Okay, so far. So now we look at a. This is the probability. So you can see that the next um, outcome of the experiment is independent on the previous one. So are the individual individual trials, they're independent of each other. The first time you get a head is always one third. Second time get a head is also one third. Third time get a head is also one third. So it's are independent of each other. Okay, so far. Yeah. So we can find the probability of getting exactly two hits are obtained in this in this way. Okay, yeah. So we see here for this three, we can make it into three choose two, then one third to the power of two, then two third. Okay, so this is basically the probability of getting two hits. See, hit, hit, and then the tail. Okay. So one third is the probability of getting a hit. Half, is, uh, one, two third is the probability of getting a tail. And then, then we do three choose two, multiply by that. Okay, so far? Yeah. So we look at the, the, this very important formula. Ah, this is very important. So the probability of F, x getting a, x equals to x is n choose x times the probability of p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of n as p. So this represents a success. p is a success, right? Success happens, happens to for, happen for, eight, uh, for x times. Then that 1 minus p is the probability of uh, fail. 
probability of a failure case. And then it will happen for n minus x times. Then we from the n trials, we choose x trial to be the success. So let's talk about the probability one more time, the formula one more time. n choose x, this means the um, permutation part, okay, to account for the order. p to the power of x is basically the probability of a success happen for x times. And the failure is probability as 1 minus p. So 1 minus p occur for n minus x times. So total, okay, we have n trials. Okay, success every time is p. So if it happens for n times. For failure, it is 1 minus p. It happens for n minus x times. Okay, so far? Okay, now we look at characteristics of binomial distribution binomial random variable or binomial distribution. So we're going to talk about the important features. We look at some examples of our binomial random variable. For example, number of hit obtained when the coin is tossed 10 times. Number of six obtained when the die is thrown five times. Number of ace cards obtained when five cards are drawn with replacement from a deck of 52 playing cards. Okay, so far. And then we look at the scenario that are not binomial variables. Okay, for example, the number of number on top face of a die where it is tossed, okay? So number of tosses of die until a six is first obtained. It's not a binomial distribution as well. The other one is the number of green cards drawn from a bag that contains 10 cards, three green and seven blue. The cards are drawn in without replacement. If you have replacement, the probability every time you can draw the ace card is the constant. So from the positive, uh, from, the, from the above example, we need to know the experiment will be and repeated independent trials. So you can compare case C and case F. So F because of the without replacement, the probability every time you get a green card, okay, is not the same, right? So for independent, it is always with replacement okay and then we look at each trial has only two outcomes either a success or a failure and the probability p denoted by p is a constant in each trial okay so far yeah so we now look at notation okay so when you write the notation you will do x is a binomial distribution that n common p. What does n represent? n is the total number of trials. p is the probability of a success. Probability of a success. This is the notation. So for example, okay, we have probability x equals to x is the same as the Bernoulli's formula just now. n choose x to choose the number of uh, success cases out of n trials. p to the power of x basically means it's success for x time. And then failure is 1 minus p, and it will happen for n minus x time. OK, so far? Yeah. So we can look at example 1. Okay. I want you to try example 1, part 1, part 2, part 3. So for the first one, example 1, part 1, for probability x equals to x, I use a formula. So there are three rolling. Each time you get a six, the chance is the probability is one over six. So the probability of uh one over six will happen two times. The third time is a fail. It's like that. Okay, so you can work out the answer and I'll show you shortly. Okay, we can just use calculator. Do you see the working here? So when you write, you can write x is a binomial distribution. Number of trial is three. Each time you can have 
one six as the probability for a success. Okay, so far. Okay, now we look at the second part. How do we tabulate the probability distribution of x? Okay, so we look at this together. Ah, this is the table. Okay, so we have the probability distribution table as a number of uh, six you can get is zero, one, two, three. Because we have six, we throw the dice three times. So every time you get a six is probability of one over six. So most likely, actually we get no six. Left. So five over six is every time fail, fail for three times. Then success one time, fail two times, three choose one. Successful for two times, successful for three times. You can see the successful rate for three times is very small already. It's very unlike, it's very, very unlikely that every time you get a six and it happens for three times. Okay, so far. Okay, now we look at, okay, I'll give you some time to write down the working. You may want to write down the working for in the next one minute. Now we look at the last part. Find the probability that x is less or equal to two. So we use a table. We just add up. 0, 1, 2. That's all. Done. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, another part, which is a calculator approach. You can key into calculator, your graphing calculator. Okay, so this is under binomial. Okay, and then trial is 3 trial. Probability of a success is 1 over 6. So the value of x is 2. And you do CDF, cumulative distribution function. CDF, basically, if you see this, this, then because it's 2, right, you will get answer as 0 0.99537, okay, as a final answer. That's all. Right. So now we look at this cumulative distribution function. This is actually the formula. So when x is less or equal to x, so it's x equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to x. So the maximum value that we counted, maximum probability we counted is x. So for binomial distribution, it is closely related to the binomial expansion. x is a binomial distribution of n comma p. Okay, and then You can see the expansion is going to be like this. So the remember the general formula, the Tn formula, Tn plus one formula. Uh, this is actually the formula for probability that x equals to r. Yeah, it is actually the n plus one term in the binomial expansion. So in exam, if you forget the formula, just remember. Oh, that is a M plus one or R plus one term in the expansion. Okay, so far. Okay. So let's look at question two. The example question two. So um, I want you to spend some time to try. At most eleven, so which is the probability that x less or equal to eleven. At least five, probability x greater or equals to five. Then the last one is probability between two and the less than 14. Okay, I'll give you one more minute to then I'll show you the working. You can use your graphing calculator to do it. For well, first part, part A is basically binomial CDF. Binomial CDF. I want to talk about part B. Part B is at least five questions correctly. So you should take it as from one to subtract away probability of x less or equal to four. Because we are cumulative distribution function, we can only start from zero, increase all the way to x. We cannot decrease. So it's an increasing value of x. Yeah, so we can get this constant. Then for part C as well. Uh, next lesson, I'll show you the virtual 
version of graph calculator so we can key in the values together. Today, the questions are still relatively easy. Okay, so take note of the answers here. Hi, Santosh. Can I know which topic you are doing in school now? They're starting on differential equation. Oh, okay. So still doing calculus. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Yeah. So after differential equation, uh, which which is the next topic? I'm not sure. Okay. Can you check my scheme board? I see. I think likely would be what we are doing today. Yeah. Discrete random variable and the binomial distribution. Okay, now we move on to the next part. Okay. So for example two, right? This person may G has one quarter of the probability to answer the question correctly. Yeah. So let's look at part question three. So referring to example two, if the probability of Meiji correctly answering at least R questions in the 20 in, a, in the test of 20 MCQ is at least 0 0.7, find the greatest value of R. Ah, this is how we do it. So we still have X is a binomial distribution, 20 and one quarter. So probability of X greater or equal to R equals to 0 0.7. So we use one minus probability of X less or equal to R minus one. This is greater or equal to 0 0.7. Then we can have this. So we can actually get to the table from using the graphing calculator. So we need to key in binomial distribution. Okay, then we can get into a table. So inside the table, we get different values. And then we look at, you must copy down the two value, which is slightly smaller and slightly greater than 0 0.3. You have to copy the two value, and then you can have the conclusion. Uh, you are not required to copy the table, not required to copy the table, but you are required to show the value slightly below and slightly above the needed value, which is 0 0.3. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question, question four. So we read the question first. Try to think about a method to do it. Okay, so I'll give you one more minute to try. This question, I strongly encourage you to use your graphing calculator. Okay, so for this question, the difficult part is at first, <clears throat> you don't know what is the value of P. So you can't straight away use a calculator to key in the value. So you need to draw the graph Y equals to then the binomial. Do you see the second photo here? So you should key in this part. This is a binomial, this is a binomial uh, distribution graph. Okay, so the horizontal is Y equals to 0 0.3, yeah. So we look for the intersection point, whereas the smallest value of P is 56.3. So here we use one binomial distribution minus another binomial distribution. The power or the value of P, we can take it as X over 100. Okay, take a look at this. So next, as I mentioned, next lesson, we are going to try to use a calculator for, I'll show you the on the screen, uh, how do we key into the calculator. Okay, so let's I'll give you one minute to write down the working, then we look at some of the characteristics of binomial distribution. Okay, so now we look at some of the characteristics of binomial distribution. So when the probability is 0 0.1, which is a small probability. As you can see, the X is zero is very likely X equals to one among the 10 trials. And then the probability decreases. So if the probability is 0 0.3 and there are 10 trials, remember the first number, first number P represent the number of trials. Second number P represent the probability of a success. Okay, so when probability equals to five, it's pretty symmetrical, okay? The distribution become more symmetrical when probability equals to five. When the probability increases to 0 0.9, we can expect to see, because the expectation, expectation of X equals to MP, which we didn't cover just now, huh? We didn't cover just now. So the probability of a success is 0 0.9, 10 trials. So as you can see from here, 
First case, if you use the expectation for binomial distribution, expectation of x is np. So n multiplied by p for the case case is one. So that's why one is with the greatest probability. Second case is uh, expectation equals to 10 multiplied by 0 0.3, which is three. Third one, expectation equals to 10 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is five. The last one is 10 multiplied by 0 0.9, which is nine. Okay, so this comes to the binomial distribution, the expectation and the variance formula. Okay, which is uh, the last part of binomial distribution we'll be focusing on this next week. So today I just do a very quick introduction of the formula. Expectation of x, which is np, and the variance of x is np times one minus p. Some of the school use npq. Okay, this q is probability of a failure, which is one minus p. Okay, yeah. So for homework today, let's look at the one, two, three. That's all. So for more, it's tutorial 3A, question 1 to question 3. So next lesson, please get ready your graphing calculator. You are, we are not able to do the question if you don't have your graphing calculator. Okay, yeah. So all the best ones uh, have a good study break during your March holiday. I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.